Hey, welcome to the newsroom. I'm Owen Poindexter, senior writer here with Front Office Sports. The Washington Commanders are going to be sold, most likely, and our senior reporter, AJ Paris, has been on top of this story, both how much the team might go for, who is likely to buy them, but also why they're getting sold, because team owner Dan Snyder probably does not actually want to sell the team, but he's being compelled to for several legal and PR reasons. So we're gonna be getting into all of that right after this. 2000, 2008, 2022. When it comes to the economy, those are some scary years. Dot com crash, housing crash, and the roller coaster we're going through right now. One thing is certain, it's a dangerous time to not know your numbers. But over 31,000 businesses have the confidence and clarity they need because they rely on NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, and budgeting, so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins. Everything you need all in one place. So how do you prepare for uncertain times? The answer, NetSuite. NetSuite helps you identify rising costs, automate your business processes, and easily see where to save money. That's why 93% of customers say they improve their visibility and control when they upgraded to NetSuite. What are you waiting for? Right now, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to netsuite.com slash the newsroom right now. netsuite.com slash the newsroom. netsuite.com slash the newsroom. All right, let's get into it. Uh, we've got our senior reporter, AJ Perez, here joining us. You've been on top of this story, AJ. How are you doing? Not bad, not bad. Um, good to be back. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, by the way, do you have an NFL team or rooting interest anywhere before we get into <laughs> I all was, this stuff? I was. I grew up a Rams fan, um, but then when they moved to okay. St. Louis, I kind of stopped following them, and then they moved back. And I don't live in LA or, or California anymore, so I, uh, I kind of don't, I don't have a team, which is great covering the NFL, not having any rooting, rooting interests whatsoever. So, yeah, probably makes life a little easier. Yeah, because I know you're a Dodgers fan, but I wonder, yeah. like, yeah, LA and yeah. the NFL have been through through so much weirdness. Yeah. Um, all right. Speaking of weirdness. The Washington Commanders are, uh, they're being sold uh, for reasons we will get into, but um, you, you've had some reporting on this just, just recently, you just published a story. Um, so uh, give us first, we'll, we'll get into the sale itself and then get into why this is all happening. So what's, what's the status of the Commander sale? Um, yeah, who's in? It's definitely happening. Um, when might it happen? Give us the, the rundown here. Yeah, so it's going to be a long process. It'll be probably like another couple of months before we know all the ownership groups who are going to be vying for them. Uh, this is pretty much all going to be handled by bankers. So when you see all, we saw you know what Kevin Durant said at ESPN. We saw what Byron Allen's been doing with his interviews, and obviously RG three. You know, this this stuff is not usually done over um, you know public publicly. Well, a lot of the stuff is done just through um, you know if it's Jeff Bezos, it'll be his accountants, his lawyers reaching out to Bank of America. They're the only ones that they're going to pretty, pretty, pretty tight lid on it um, because it's going to take a lot of money. And we're, we're looking uh, I was told last week and I, I kind of downplayed it in my story, but it was like one of my uh, sources, NFL team executives said it could go close to eight billion dollars. Wow. That's going to. So so when you, when, you, when you think about that, so you're thinking about, you know, that's going to be, you know, in 30 percent cash down. That's a lot of money to put down. Uh, for anything, that's why it's good. It's very few people can afford this. Uh, it's the bill. You know, when and, and my source last week said, you know, we're running out of running out of billionaires who want to buy these teams um, because it's uh, it's gonna take a lot of money to be that principal owner. Um, so you know, it's gonna we're gonna. I I was told five uh, groups at least have reached out to Bank of America, including Bezos, um, and I have not confirmed Jay Z personally, but it's, that's been reported out there that he's teaming up with with uh, Jeff Bezos um, for the for 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 his bid. But there's a uh, there's also there's all for Bezos. There are a lot of people are around that, that I wouldn't say close to him, but a lot of people who know how he's going to approach this told me that um, that you know he's worried about bidding against himself, and that's that's always an option with these things. You know, there is there 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 can be scenarios, especially when it gets past six billion to seven billion dollars, possibly. You know, you're. There's very, you know, there's a good chance that Be Bezos could be bidding against himself, and uh, that's going to be, uh, this is going to be a, a very big thing. Uh, this is, you know, this Bank of America handled it, handled the, the sale for the Clippers. There were some issues there, um, so they want to make this as straightforward and as um, uh, successful for Bank of America, which in turn gets a cut of the sale. Um, so there, this is going to be handled fairly, you know, I, I would say quickly for the nfl you know it'll be you know i was 
the six months report I heard over the weekend, I was able to verify that's still a possibility. But uh, you know, this is this is there's you know they're gonna they're gonna get the you know the the most money they can for it, and uh, and and to somebody who who can clear the finance committee and then get twenty four votes by NFL ownership. Yeah, and the the bidding against himself thing that's something that's crossed my mind is it basically it seems like they're gonna have all these bidders and. Bezos is going to be able to say like that plus half a billion or that plus one billion. He could he could run up to ten billion, no problem if he really felt like it. Um, but yeah, obviously there's going to, he's going to need some proof that someone else can put up something comparable uh, before he goes that far. Um, just to ask the dumbest possible question here: Is the team definitely getting sold? Yeah, I think there's all the indications are yes. You know, he, although the statement last Wednesday said they're exploring options or, right, you know, right, that, yeah. that that was basically what the, well, it wasn't the statement. It was the statement after the statement said they're exploring all options. But at this point, you know, especially with the investigations going on um, and, you know, you, you saw the reactions yesterday from the fans. Like they were they were happier after a loss than they've ever probably ever been in 23 years uh, because they, you know, they see they, you know, they they were, they were chanting sell the team and they wore their shirts yesterday. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're expecting to sell and, and all the people I talk to, the bankers and other people around the league, you know, they, they also feel there's really no other choice, but to sell at least 90% of the team, you know, whether he'll keep 10% or something, that's still a possibility. Right, right. Yeah. It reminds me, I'm a Mets fan. And when the Will Ponds finally actually sold, you know, say what you will about Steve Cohen, just getting rid of the Will Ponds was like, you know, who, who cares how the team did today? Like we're, it's, it's a new era in New York. So it's feels like one of those situations. Also, the sale reminds me a little bit of the Chelsea sale, just in that you do, yeah, you know, you've got Durant, RG3. Um, it's like people seem like publicly interested in a way that you don't always get with the team sale. Well, like some team sales, it's like, oh, I didn't even know they were up for sale. And all of a sudden, like yeah. some hedge fund is, is buying them. Whereas this, it's like, it's drawing a lot of both like huge money, but also just people who are like, yeah, I would love a piece of the commanders if I could get in on that. Yeah, I think it's part of it is because because they're an original six. There's no original six or eight or you know they're 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 an original franchise. They were in the first NFL franchise to exist, and one hasn't sold since they since uh, Dan Snyder bought bought the team in 1999. These these type of teams don't go on the market often, even though they need a new stadium. They're they're not. Uh, I wouldn't say they're a playoff exactly playoff bound this year. Possibly they could they could they could squeak in. This team hasn't had a lot of a lot of success under Snyder, but there's so much potential, and 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 the NFL's you know, seen it, that's why they, you know, this is why I was asked on a podcast the other day of whether they'll, they'll, they'll move. There's zero chance. You know, this is a market that, that is languished. You know, obviously the Ravens moved in in the, in the late nineties and maybe took some of the Maryland fans away, but they're still a major franchise, major DMA. They're, they're a top 10 DMA. So they're, they're, you know, they're the fans here and generation of fans almost now have been waiting for, uh, you know, something positive and a new direction. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and let's get into actually before we do that, you mentioned the stadium part. We should just throw that in. Um, they're going to need a new stadium <laughs> or yeah. major, major upgrades to the one they've already got. Um, so yeah, when we say six, seven, maybe eight billion dollars, tack on another two or three on top of that. Yes. Um, and I guess I, my sense is that you know they have different states trying to draw them in or say, you know, we, we can put up this much money, we can't put up this much money. And also there's an election, uh, we're recording us some money, there's an election tomorrow, that could scramble things a bit. Anyway, the new owner is likely going to have to, you know, cough up another, yeah, two or $3 billion for a new facility. Um, but yeah, let's get into why this team is getting sold, because it's not exactly a uh, voluntary, you know, I've just decided to do other things with my life, spend more time with my family, that kind of thing. Uh, so the commanders and Dan Snyder are facing investigations for multiple things. So there's the harassment side of it and the financial impropriety side of it. And just first of all, these things don't mix, right? They're they're two all separate they, things. Yeah, there being there's some investigations that go both. I mean, the House Oversight Committee uh, had was was going in in, in in the toxic workplace, which is now 11 months old now. Oh, sorry, 13 months old. Uh, it's been a while. It was last October, t 2021, after the Gruden emails leaked, um, and that re that restarted everything. Every so it, it put more of a focus back on Snyder, who had stepped aside. We found out a few weeks ago that well, he was like basically banned for three about three months, 
and we didn't know it at the time. It was just a weird thing. So, so that, uh, so there's the NFL investigation that's looking into both. There's the, um, there's the, uh, um, Mary Jo White investigation, which is going on now. So the House Oversight Committee, Mary Jo White, are looking into both. But the others, uh, you know, the, um, you know, the the Department of Justice, our report last week, is pretty much only looking into, as far as we know, looking into the financial side of things, whether holding money back either from the owners or holding back money from fans, deposits and such. Uh, and it uh, looks like the other attorneys general, so that's uh, Maryland, D.C. and Virginia, uh, Maryland sourced, you know, they never said publicly that, that they're doing it, but there's all indications I've been told they are. Um, they're looking at, at the financial side of things and some of the, well, well, well for two reasons. Uh, one is, uh, you know, there's the fans who, for, for, especially for, for, for like Virginia and DC, they don't, they're, they're not based there. I mean, the, the headquarters are based here, but, you know, it's, it's hard to say that the stuff happened here because a lot of the allegations come from FedEx, which is in Landover, Maryland, where, where, where it's based out of. So there's uh, so that's maybe maybe more of a fan thing, um, but uh, as far as you know, holding money back and such, but yeah, Maryland could be looking into uh, you know more deeper you know issues when it when it comes to uh, ticket holders and whether re- the, you know the NFL revenue was held back as we reported back in uh, March. All right, yeah, so. Uh, a lot to dive in here. Here, so when you say the Mary Jo White investigation, she's the former SEC chair, but she's running mm-hmm. the NFL's investigation into all yes, this, right? Yes, yeah. yeah, this is the second one. Uh, the first one concluded in July, July twenty twenty one. That was done by Beth Wilkinson. She's the one that find uh, or suggested, and, and the NFL find uh, find um, the the team ten million dollars and made a, a series of recommendations, which they which they have enacted to improve the workplace environment. Um, and uh, now Mary Jo White's looking into one harassment claim made against uh, Dan Snyder at, during a roundtable at the House Oversight Committee uh, around the Super Bowl time of uh, earlier this year, um, and also the, the financial side of it. So is some of the harassment stuff, um, and we should get into detail about what we're actually talking about there, but is some of that, is the book closed on that to some degree because of the Wilkinson investigation and the fine, or is that, all that still pretty live? Pretty much the only one is the uh, former uh, cheerleading coordinator who was at, at the at the roundtable who who alleged that um, and you know, the NF Dan Siders denied this and his people have said she doesn't even know when exactly it happened but it was it was it, I can what I, from what I was told it was it happened in in, in DC it happened at a um, a basically a, kind of a work event you know there was uh, where 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 Snyder allegedly put his hand on her and tried to force her into his limo. You know that you know there is uh, you know there is they they've been been very the anti people have been very strong that 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 never happened um, so that's uh, so that that's the one Mary Jo White's looking into um, a- along with the um, the letter that was sent to the FTC um, which was all the financial stuff which apparently that you the U S attorney uh, for the uh, Eastern District of Virginia which is in Alexandria here um, is looking into and just to zoom in on the harassment allegations end of this. So it reminds me a little bit of the situation with the Phoenix Suns and Robert Sarver, where um, you've, I mean, we should say a lot of this is alleged, you know, hasn't been proven or admitted to. um, But we have an owner, Dan Snyder, who has been alleged to do um, a lot of pretty horrible things. um, And yeah, have a pretty horrible attitude toward women. And he's obviously running this whole organization. And so that has implications for who he brings in, the culture under him. Um, and so, you know, it's it's him, but it's also the entire team. So fill us in a little bit on just, you know, including stuff that Wilkinson already looked into, uh, what this team, this owner has been accused of. It's been accused of several different things. Um, the, the, the one thing, and that's from my reporting and reporting by others, not much, if anything, has been linked directly to Snyder. There's always been a firewall there. There's always been, you know, the, that there is a deniability. For one, he's never had a a, a corporate email with the team ever. So all these huh, emails wow. get leaked out. That's bizarre. He's never had it. He's never had an email. He doesn't do business over email. Um, and uh, you can, you, there's, he was pretty hands on at the start of his ownership, and he's been kind of, you could say he was less going forward, but he's still involved. Even when, you know, even even though now that his wife Tani is the co CEO and is basically the day to day person, that's uh, that's what they tell us. Um, you know, Snyder's still, Dan Snyder's still involved a lot. And, um, you know, I don't think he's getting getting into the player personnel moves like he did earlier on. But he's, you know, he has, you know, fairly, he, he's, he's, he's very, you know, day to day. He's 
he's fairly involved. You know, he's probably just as involved, if not more, than most other owners in the NFL. Uh, but the, yeah, there's so all the financial stuff, you know, they are denying all those allegations too, because, uh, and a lot of it just, you know, we, we can only report that the commanders alleged, allegedly did stuff, you know, whether there hasn't been any smoking gun as far as Snyder ordered or Snyder um, directed that this stuff happen. Um, and maybe that's going to come out in one of these investigations. Maybe there's going to be, you know, there's outside of depositions and outside of uh, someone else's testimony, maybe there will be some like physical evidence that Snyder did actually was actually involved, at least had knowledge of this, um, which he also denies. So that's uh, that, that's going to be interesting to see um, because there, there has there been a lot of a lot of things said, said about Snyder um, um, and uh, alleged against Snyder. It's but it's nothing has you know he's the the biggest thing was all the noise and that's, this is why we're here. It's 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 not just it's 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 a it's a hostile workplace. It's allegations against him. It's also the you know having one of the lowest attendance in, in the nfl it's having the tv ratings that locally here in dc are just are just have, have sunk so much um and the, and then there's the stadium that that he that he can't get after you know vegas got 700 million dollars you know the bills got about a billion dollars of public financing tennessee's gonna get about a billion dollars of public financing and he and he can't get two or two or three hundred million dollars which will cover about not even 10 percent of the cost of the stadium yeah and some of that seems to be all this stuff like legislators at least some of them don't seem all that thrilled about doing business with this guy when you know if any of these allegations are true he seems like a, a pretty you know potentially despicable character um and yeah not someone you, you want to be sending that much money in public funds or i mean any money really um so so we've got that end of things then there's the financial side so <laughs> So we've got some accounting malpractice and maybe more. So what is the team accused of on that end? Yeah, we reported uh, back in March that it was they were holding back ticket revenue from the league. Um, it was not a huge percentage. It was, you know, we were talking millions, not tens of millions, as far as we could tell. You know, there could be more out there. That that, that was only from what was pat, what was known in March and April. You know, other these investigations could have uncovered more stuff. We don't know yet. Um, it's hard to say. So, uh, but it's, it was that then holding deposits back from fans, um, or actually corporate, mostly corporate, corporate, um, suites and businesses who, who bought suites, hold, holding some deposits. But even there, that's, we're talking thousands of dollars. We're not, um, that's why the NFLPA did really, really didn't get involved into the holding the revenue back is for, even though they do share in the revenue, it would have not changed the cap that much. I think that's the main reason they didn't get involved, but, uh, there's just, uh, that, that's it. And it's basically, he's um you know he's he's been accused of a lot of different things um and uh so far you know there has none of these investigations so far that have launched since beth wilkinson's uh investigation closed in july 2021 there's been no definitive proof or major you know smoke like i guess I before like any smoking guns that really show that snyder had the knowledge or even if these allegations are 100 percent true this seems like a naive question but I'm surprised that that would be worth it to the team to hold back a little bit of money when if you start getting attention for that, that it can't be worth it. I mean, maybe it's, you know, like like any of these schemes where it's like, what were they thinking? It's like, well, they probably were thinking they weren't going to get caught. And again, all allegations, we don't know. But yeah, a any sense of like what was going on here? Uh, well, one of my sources told me this very long time ago, probably about eight or nine months ago, one of my sources told me, that Dan Snyder is the kid who, like that 10 year old kid who uh, cheats at checkers when there's nothing on the line, <laughs> you know, uh -huh. that he just, that's, that's just kind of part of it's That's part of who he is. And now it's kind of unfair to Snyder because like, he doesn't do media. I can't ask him whether he cheated at checkers when he was 10, but he's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he doesn't, that's another part of it. You know, the next owner, you know, part of the problem here is just, this just, just the bad PR. I mean, and that a lot of that, even like going back a few years before the Washington Post started reporting on this, you know, it's just the losing. You know, this this team has not been successful. Um, they haven't had a star quarterback. The best one they had was RG3, and he tore his knee up his rookie year. Um, and then Kirk Cousins, they, they couldn't keep Kirk Cousins around. Um, so that's a, that's a major part of it. It's just like you keep, they've they've done their best to you know to try to get these you know these keep these players, and they have to overpay to get these free agents. And and uh, you know, one of my sources a few weeks ago told me it's not really the players not coming here. It's 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 they've had coaches who don't want to come here. Um, and you know, this is all, this is all fall, falls on Ron Rivera. Um, you know, and I think, you know, he's, he's a, you know, solid NFL coach. Um, I think, uh, but 
he, you know, he, he asked, and he's, he's been through this before too, the sales process when, when uh, Jerry Richardson got accused of um, workplace misconduct. And, um, you know, so he's been through kind of uh, this whole process before. So I think he, he actually talked about it a little bit on uh, Thursday or Friday about, you know, kind of what to expect from it. So that's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's where it's another season in flux, but there's like hope that this would be, you know, by this time in there, you know, Jay Glazer and a couple others you reported yesterday that they, that it could be done by the NFL annual meeting in, in March. And I'm, you know, that's possible. I mean, that's actually, uh, that'd be about around, that's what I reported today. It was a bit of, that's how, about how quickly the Panthers went um, from mm-hmm. when Richardson said he'd sell before he was approved by uh, 24 plus owners. Yeah. I mean, especially if it's, you know, a consensus that it's going to be Bezos. They just have to like go through the process enough to find a number that everyone's okay with um, that you could see that wrapping up kind of quickly. Um, just to wrap up the financial stuff, what about the allegation that they had two sets of books? There's like the public, yeah. here's our accounting, and then the private, here's what's actually going on. Um, wh- what do we know about that? That's the intriguing part. So uh, we reported that, uh, the whole two books thing. Um, and um, that's... That that was probably going to be whether because these teams are audited every year. These and 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 these audits are done by well known, you know, you know, Price Water Price uh, Waterhouse Coopers and those kind of places. I um, mean, come in here, they come into Ashburn. I say here, so I'm in Ashburn, I'm five minutes away um, from headquarters, and they they come and look at the books. Now, one of the one of the, one of the, one of the things we heard is that you know the books they saw weren't the books weren't the real books. Um, and, uh, whether, but I've had people say that's pretty much impossible to do. Um, and, and Snyder has denied that, that, that ever happened, but you know, the, you, you have to, the, the revenue, the teams can keep a lot of revenue. You can keep the park and you can keep the luxury suites, you know, but all this, all pretty much all the seating has to be shared. Uh, that has to be put in, given to the NFL and into a pool of money. And from there, they, 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 they distribute it, distribute to the other teams, the visiting teams that also becomes part of the league revenue um, where, you know, that has to go to the players and, 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 and it, I guess that'd be, yeah, be much at the players and the other owners. So there's uh, so that's part of it. That was like the whole two books thing is like, was he, he was, uh, did they accurately report or keep the books? Um, you know, it's going to take friends and accountant. I mean, a lot of forensic accountants to, 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 to figure that out. Cause there's, you know, while it's hard to do, it's not impossible. Right. That's another of those, like, is this really worth it, guys? Like, how bad does it have to be before it becomes worth it to go through the trouble of cooking your books? It's not just, you know, showing them a different piece of paper and keeping the real one in your desk. Um, and so Snyder uh, could theoretically be pushed out by the other owners if they need is it a three quarters majority to do that or two yeah, thirds. Yeah, 24. Um, it's it's yeah, it's it's the it's same threshold to approve. It, when when Walton got approved in August, it was the same threshold, 24 plus, 20, at least yeah, 24. Yeah. So the Colts owner, Jim Irsay, has been very publicly saying, let's get rid of this guy. Um, do you think there is an actual sense that something like that could happen? Or is is it kind of a moot point now if this team's going to get sold yeah. one or another? The only way that will come into play is if Snyder, you know, there was all scenario that, that uh, 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 a scenario that was laid out to me by one of the bankers last week, whether... Snyder goes to the sale process and he asks for like $10 billion and no one wants to pay $10 billion. Like, oh, I tried to sell the team and no one wanted to, no one wanted to pay the price I wanted. That's a, that's kind of way out there, a little bit out there, but you know, it's uh, you know, that's um, you know, I, I think, I think now that he's, you know, even though he hasn't totally on the record said he's selling it, selling all or almost all of the team, it's pretty much a, you know, I, I think everybody around the league expects him to do that. And he, and he was being urged, for several months, you know, and while Ursa was the first to say it publicly, I was reporting the same thing. Other reporters around the NFL who covered the NFL reported the same thing that that Snyder was being basically urged it like, you know, and back channel like hey, you got this is all the stuff, all the noise, you know, you need to, you know, you need to get out, um, you know, and I think that's the you know, eventually I think I think I think that worked. I think that was, um, you know, the he saw he saw. Well, yeah, he could be forced out. He And then he was going to be probably, no, no, knowing Snyder. Uh, the people who and the people who who know Dan Snyder thinks that he would have he, he, he would have sued the NFL. I mean, holding the sale up and putting this holding the franchise, you know, and the NFL basically hostage for several months as you know what federal whatever federal lawsuit or state lawsuit he files to to hold to. Uh, he has a lot of lawyers, as we all know. So um, every seems like every few weeks a new one pops up to speak for him. Yeah, yeah. With the Ursa thing, 
it, what he was saying wasn't particularly surprising, uh, especially mm-hmm. off of yours and others reporting. It was more just that he said it publicly. It was like, okay, yeah. it's, you know, it, it's it's gotten to that point that they're they're that sick of this guy. They're willing to just at least someone's willing to go to the media and say, yeah, we want him out. Um, all right, so let's let's wrap up. Getting back to the sale itself, if you had to bet on Bezos and whoever else in his ownership group, perhaps Jay Z, uh, versus the field, who are you taking? I'm taking Bezos as of now, um, and I think uh, and and Bezos is going about it the right way. I think the I'm not saying the NFL. I have no information. The NFL was kind of um, you know they the original ownership group for the Broncos. We didn't know who the minorities involved in it until yeah we got Lewis Hamilton um, obviously at the end. Yeah, I think that having Jay Z cut his name out there at the start is going to be huge. Um, he'll have to do some stuff with his agency. You know, he had a, he had his when he when he um, when he uh, when when Rock Nation started, he had to sell his 0.15 percent of of the Brooklyn Nets. Um, but you know, that's uh, he may have to either divest or figure out some kind of trust thing for um, for Rock Nation since they do have have about 60 NFL players. Um, so, but that's you know we're still early, and I think we're it's going to be another couple two or three months before we start talking and hearing the hard numbers of where this is going to sell for and what uh, how many groups are going to be buying for it. And then you throw in the Seahawks. The Seahawks are probably, that there's been talk that the Seahawks are the next likely team to go for to you know to go on the market. And obviously, while 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 Bezos um, you know has a house, a very huge house here in D.C. and he has he owns the Washington Post. And um, when he was when, when he was CEO of Amazon, they they had that um, the new headquarters right across the Potomac in Arlington. Um, you know, there is uh, you know what, the Seattle would be a lot cheaper for him, and he also he that's where Amazon you know started. That's where he's that's where he started at all. So that's a that could be that could be an interesting thing. Whether you know that's whether it whether the um, you know the Allen Trust sells um, the Seahawks is that's not a done deal either. But um, there's there's been a lot of talk about um, you know maybe as soon as next year, the year after, the Seahawks could be the next uh, team on the market. So that could actually affect how much this team goes for. But you know, even though the Seahawks have had, had a lot more success over the last couple of decades, you know, they're still not the, you know, the Washington, Washington commanders and, you know, the history that, um, that, that this team has. Yeah. Yeah. And with the Jay-Z reports, that's where my mind went to. The NFL seems to want a, a black owner, uh, given how much attention um, Byron Allen has gotten. And uh, and Jay-Z wouldn't, you know, he would probably have something like the 1.5% he had with the Nets, but it would be, but everyone thought of Jay-Z as, as, as the Nets owner, as basically like Joseph Tsai and Jay-Z, like they're, um, yeah. like they're a little partnership. So yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah. and, uh, and, and Jay-Z gave him credit. I mean, he got that team to Brooklyn. I mean, that's even, even though he owned a little piece of that, uh, of that franchise, he was you know, instrumental in getting that, getting, getting the team to Brooklyn. And I think, uh, and I think that's, what's going to happen. I think, um, someone like someone, you know, but say be, be beyond Bezos and his money and his political connections, which could eventually maybe even get the team back into DC at the RFK site, you know, having somebody, having a celebrity like that to talk to politicians to just, instead of just having throwing lobbyists out there, having someone like Jay-Z speak to your franchise is going to be huge. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thank you so much, AJ. This is going to be a fascinating story. Uh, it's going to change the league one way or another. And uh, both with the investigations and with the sale and everything that's going to come after it. So thank you so much. We'll have you back on, you know, (laughs) as this thing unfolds. Thanks so much for listening to The Newsroom. Please rate us and review us on the podcast service of your choice. That'll help the algorithm tell other people that this is an interesting show. And then those people will tell their friends and the virtuous cycle continues. Also, check out our other shows. We've got The Lead Off, hosted by Abigail Gentrup. She'll keep you up to date on the biggest stories in the sports business world in five minutes or less every single day. And then we've got My Other Passion, hosted by our editor-in-chief, Ernest Baker, interviewing some of the biggest names in the sports business world, both on the stuff you know about them and a lot of stuff you don't know about them. So subscribe here. We'll come at you every Thursday. Check out our other shows and we'll see you next week.